Okay, so welcome yes, everybody uh, to this uh, impromptu webinar that we have uh, pulled together. So just uh, to give you a little perspective, I think uh, the genesis of this has been that, you know, all of us, uh, as we are going about our regular, have been sharing uh, uh, the, the challenges we've been having in this, uh, um, during this uh, pandemic, uh, you know, informally with each other. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, I personally was trying to see how we can help in the first wave. We did certain things like... I can't talk to you right now. Huh? Yeah, somebody, needs to, somebody needs to go on mute. So, so in that, you know, uh, but suddenly in the second wave, uh, when we started experiencing all these uh, challenges and tragedies around us, uh, I think a lot of us uh, felt what can we do to help. And, uh, uh, and uh, you know, we reached out to a few hospitals and we found out, I, I found some of my colleagues uh, and some of my classmates in the Delhi area trying to import uh, oxygenators and, uh, and, and donate them to the hospital. So we said, well, why don't we do the same thing in Bangalore? And when we re reached out to a hospital, I, I realized that they had already acquired oxygenators and when they were trying uh, to uh, use it on patients, they found that it was not having the desired effect. And they realized that a lot of these imported oxygen generators are just uh, uh, pumping air rather than uh, providing the right levels of uh, oxygen purity, which can actually help the patients. And they were having to junk these. Uh, so there was a lot of uh, donation money coming in and people are trying all the goodwill from the people, but this is all getting wasted. So it kind of triggered then, and, and then as I shared this with a lot of people, I think that a lot of us are in the same boat. And we felt, why don't we mobilize the community and try to see what we can do to make in India. Then we came across the fact that ISC has been trying to do something in this direction for the last uh, almost uh, year or so. And we, we found uh, uh, this uh, group, uh, you know, Oxogen, they have uh, a solution uh, which uh, which they are ramping to production. So we said, why don't we get everybody together? And this is a starting point. And uh, and uh, our intention is to bring bring the right stakeholders together. And and in the audience today, there are a lot of people from potential manufacturers, regulators, uh, and and volunteers. Uh, you know, and and probably funders or if you want to do crowdfunding or something. So so there's a lot of uh, people who are very keenly interested. It's amazing to see that uh, we have uh, what over a hundred uh, uh, attendees uh, just uh, when we announced this last year, 136 attendees right now in this session. So, so I pass it on to Mr. Pathak, Mr. R. K. Pathak from Department of Telecommunications. He's a Deputy Director General of International Collaborations. He's also the person who uh, you know was kind of like the founding father of TSDSI. He conceived the whole concept of TSDSI and he currently is also uh, responsible for TCOE, the Telecom Center of Excellence, which is trying to promote uh, a lot of uh, the, uh, the startup MSME community in India to, to manufacture in India. His focus was 5G, but when we told him what about oxygen concentrator, he said, yes, of course. So, so thanks to him for coming and, uh, and uh, and encouraging this, and let's let's hear from him, and then from all the researchers and entrepreneurs here. Uh, over to you, Mr. Patak. But before I do that, I think there is a provision to put your questions in the chat, and uh, and Bindu will guide us through all the logistics. And also in the Q and A sessions, if people who want to speak, they can uh, raise their hands and they can be unmuted. So over to you, Mr. Patak. Uh, thank you, Pamela. I'm sure I'm audible and uh, I would like to first pay my respect to all the gurus here because I think they have been the guiding always in all the times and naturally this uh, more important during the pandemic. So today's session is a very unique session that we have professors who have done a lot of research on a subject as well as industry who want to manufacture and user also as a hospital also so all three are together and i think whatever pamela you told 
I have the practical experience that even I imported a oximeter from China and it's not giving the result. Though it says that it's 10, uh, uh, 10 liter per uh, minutes, it, it has to give. And its weight is also exactly more than 20 kg, whatever I could find out from internet. This should give me the desired flow of about 10. And that was my requirement for the my patient, but it's not giving. So I think this is a, a in this pandemic, this is the right forum that we all Indians should come together. And that's what I am saying. So all who, whoever is on the attendee side also, so even their help will be required. We have so many Indian startup forums and others on our website to them that we have to manufacture oximeters, ventilators, and concentrators, whatever is required for the country from our own design, such that uh, we also fulfill our requirement and subsequently export also. As far as TCO India is concerned, presently they are doing the implementing, as a working as implementing agency for two schemes of Department of Telecommunication. And that is one is 5G hackathon. In the 5G hackathon, we have shortlisted 100 startups, MSME, and professionals, even students are also there. So total 67 students and startup and 33 professionals. And right now we are hand holding them to de develop their use cases, applications, and DOT has already announced 5G trials some four days back. So these all hundred can demonstrate their applications. Even this is the message to all the professors, industry, academia here, including hospitals that if you have any 5G use case, the moment we are going to start the live G 5G trial with the telecom provider, I invite you and I will be the contact person. I am the contact person in the department. I'll be sharing my email. So you give us, you just mail me and I will ensure that we showcase our Indian 5G use cases when we are doing the trial. Naturally, you have to bear all your expenses and I will ensure that I uh, give you the access part. So whatever is available with the telecom service provider, whatever is available with the OEMs like Ericsson, Nokia, Samsung, Reliance Geo, they have been permitted, including CDOT. Or even suppose if someone comes like Civit comes with their own technology, so I think they are also welcome. If anyone, I mean, from you is interested to showcase your technology, I will assist you in the 5G, 5G trial. Other than that, we on fourth we started another scheme that is called Digital Communication Innovation Square, under which again DOT has will be funding more than 10 startups who have already developed their proof of concept product beyond the proof of concept. So this will be just for one year scheme, and all the details are available on TCO India website. With this, I would like to I think today I am the listening mode. I want that let the professors and industry talk to each other so that we do a more, uh, novel cause of development of oximeters, concentrators, and ventilators, and that should be low cost as per our requirement. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela, and all the delegates here and distinguished panelists. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Patak and Pamela, for setting the context. Uh, dear participants, uh, I'm Bindu Srivastav. I look after Marcom and partner relations at TSDSI. And thank you so much for the overwhelming response uh, joining at uh, such short notice uh, this webinar on oxygen uh, concentrators and ventilators. Uh, as um, already explained by Pamela and Mr. Patak, uh, we will be discussing uh, some uh, prototypes, uh, some uh, designs which have been developed indigenously in India on uh, oxygen concentrators and ventilators. So here today we have uh, experts from IISC Bangalore, uh, Professor Raghavan and his team, who uh, in the early 2020 started with uh, a development uh, of a ventilator and uh, early this year they also designed uh, an oxygen concentrator. Uh, Professor Raghavan is uh, from the Center for Nanoscience and Engineering at IISC Bangalore and uh, he led this initiative. Um, of the ventilator and the oxygen concentrator projects. And he would be uh, uh, sharing his experience, his team's experience on um, uh, what it takes to develop, to design the prototypes and how the manufacturing, what are the various aspects required uh, uh, for bringing it to the manufacturing stage. 
Uh, he's also, Professor Agavan is also, uh, was earlier the chair of the IP cell at IIC Bangalore. And currently he's spearheading the initiative, the activities required to commercialize the licensing aspect and uh, other regulatory compliances uh, for uh, the concentrator ventilator. So uh, over to you, Professor Agavan, to lead us through the first part of this webinar, which is uh, from prototype to manufacturing. Thank you. Professor Agavan, I'm going to unmute you. So, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, can I share my screen? Can you see my screen? Not yet. Not yet. So can you share? Uh, Get the rights to sh share the screen. Okay. Before, show screen. Okay. Are you, uh, Professor Akram, you would have received the, yeah. Yes, now we can see it. We can see it now. Thank you. Okay. And hold on. This is a new interface, and this day and age, there are many of these. Okay. Can you see my slideshow now then? I'm trying to see how I can minimize this bit. Uh, yes, we can. Yes, we can see it. We can see it properly. Just a second here. Please go ahead. And, yeah, and while we're waiting for Professor Raghavan, just a small uh, announcement. Um, uh, uh, delegates, if you have any questions from the panelists, from the speakers, please type them in the question tab. And should you want to uh, uh, exchange notes with your fellow participants or with others, please type uh, those your remarks in the chat, uh, chat window. Thank you. Uh, Professor Raghavan. Yeah, thank you and good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Vasu. I am a faculty member at the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore. And I will not take much time. Over the next five minutes, uh, I will set the stage and hand it over to the people who are actually making a difference on the ground. Uh, these include uh, Dr. Justin Gopaldas, who is an intensivist in the ICU at Manipal Hospitals. Uh, Praveen, who led the work on the oxygen concentrator, which is the need of the hour. Uh, Sushoban, uh, who is now leading the effort on the ventilator, and then Anup Varghese, who is uh, taking it towards commercialization. Uh, I thank uh, TSDSI, uh, Ms. Pamela Kumar, Bindu, and her team for making this interface possible. And I'm very glad to be here. Uh, I'm very acutely aware of the fact that today is the 8th of May 2021. That is why I have put it out there. And we don't have time to lose. And we are actually currently racing against time to make about, let's say, 10 to 25 of these concentrators and ventilators by the 15th uh, to the 30th of May, as you will hear from uh, the rest of the team. Okay, uh, just to take you through our history really, really quickly, our entire journey started in the 20, in January of 2020, when the first news started coming in from Italy. Uh, when I started talking to Justin and we started discussing this internally, as many of you may have, we very quickly realized that there is going to be a big gap in the supply demand uh, as far as healthcare is concerned on this front. And remember, this was a time when there were no vaccines. And we came to the conclusion, as the rest of the world had come to, and you had started seeing quote unquote hacks uh, for ventilators and concentrators on the web. Uh, we went all the way to the very beginning to figure out how we could push air into patients or oxygen into patients. So this is how we started. Okay, Our aim at that point in time was not to make it the cheapest, but to make it at the fastest time scale possible so that before COVID hit us, we would have something on the ground. Unfortunately, as we started developing it, we realized that it's better not to make a biomedical instrument uh, that is not good because it might end up killing a patient more than helping them. And in any case, as we were going through this journey, the first wave kind of started subsiding. But as engineers, we couldn't wait. So we continued. And by about June of 2020, we had a concentrator and a ventilator ready. Okay, in about six months. In uh, manufacturing parlance, this is what we say is a product that has reached a technology readiness level of eight. A typically four is a lab prototype that looks like an octopus with wires hanging around. And then you come to this point where you say it's a TRL level eight, where it's ready for certification and mass production. 
So this is where we were at June of 2020 last year. Then as we've been hearing over the last few days on just about every front, the first uh, COVID wave waned. Uh, we lost interest. Okay, I shouldn't say we lost interest. Our interest waned too. I mean, the faculty team, the student team, many, many small industries and people who had uh, joined us to help us on this road. But then a month ago, it started all over again. I mean, people started calling us and telling us that even if you have a concentrator or a ventilator that's half working, I would like to have one because it might save a life. And that's where we started. We restarted this whole activity. The bottlenecks and people ask us, why is it that you didn't go forward? It's a chicken and an egg story, right? Uh, we found it easier to work with the relatively smaller companies like VASMED and Gas Technologies and so on. But these companies need some kind of a purchase commitment before they can put in investment in an uncertain scenario. But nobody wants to make that purchase commitment. The first thing they say is, okay, show us about 20 to 25 of these things before we make a uh, you know, purchase. This is where I think now the larger companies or corporations or people out there who might be able to step in, need to step in because VASMED, as you will hear from them, their board has agreed to put in about 20 to 30 lakhs of investment to make the first 10 to 30 prototypes. But then they will need money to scale it up. Okay, so this was the main bottleneck. Uh, don't worry about IP. As Bindu said, I was the IP chair and the entire policy framework is available. It will be available on the IIC website. It will be available for free for all practical purposes for those of you who want to make it on a no cost or no profit basis. If you would like to make a profit, then there is a 1% royalty uh, fee of the revenue that will be charged, but it's an extremely small amount. But the key thing, and we would like to you know, ramp up production by let's say the 30th of May, is to get the supply chain going, get the assembly chain assembly done, and get certification going done all of this is happening in parallel on these two devices as we speak if china can put up a i forget thousand or ten thousand bed hospital in 10 days i'm sure this is something that we can very easily do okay so with that i am going to hand over the baton to dr justin gopaldas uh, who is going who is from manipal he's an icu intensivist we've been working with him on day one who will tell us what is the latest supply demand gap scenario? He has told me that they need concentrators to ventilators in the ratio of five to one. And I hope he will also then be able to tell you what is the latest status and what his view is on some of these prototypes that he has personally tested. With that, thank you. Uh, once again, extremely glad to be here. And I hope we are able to answer many of your questions and we come up with a plan to take this forward today. With that, over to you, Justin. Uh, good morning. I'm humbled with uh, with the request to, to be a participant, and I take the heavy burden of representing the end user of these technologies, which is a healthcare professional. Um, and as what you said, I've been associated uh, with their energetic company. I must say, because this is what I've realized is that by integrating with them over the last year, despite the hard times that we had uh, from June till. October last year and even now, they are the positive force in my day. Integ in interacting with them is the, is the positive result that I take, uh, even though we deal with a lot of gloom in the hospital, particularly as an ICU doctor. So I thank, I thank them for giving that positive uh, boost to my professional life and keeping that variation and also allowing me to uh, think out of the box uh, at times or uh, reach reach to you know the the, the knowledge gap that i had uh, in some of these corners when when i'm interacting uh, with an engineer thank you for that uh, coming to the coming to the to the, to the point uh, um, I'll, I'll just make it a quick and a crisp point that uh, about uh, 10 from, uh, two weeks ago i called wasco and said that uh, um, I've just got one of my colleagues calling who is on week and we all take turns to doing COVID weeks. Uh, most of us do the COVID week anyway, but uh, somebody takes the first on as in the one who coordinates all the admissions and discharges. 
So one of my colleagues who was doing that uh, ended up calling me saying that, uh, remember last year you were making the ventilator that you guys uh, sort of you know, circulated about uh, its um, third version. Um, so is it available? If you have a couple of them, can I use them? And then I called Wasu saying that, uh, what's happening with that? And Wasu said that we have taken it apart, so we are upgrading the software, and so it's done. And I said, is it possible? Can we use it? And he said, and they did two all-nighters. I am amazed at, at the amount of energy they put in, even the first time as well, uh, they, they, that they got it done under 48 hours with, the, with the, all the tweaks that I wanted. And we fired it up in hospital. And it worked, it worked like a charm. Um, for the sort of you know, most sick patients, uh, it would save the day for quite a few of them. And so that's, that's, that, that, that was a step one for us. And that step two was, was to make sure that we get the clearances because these are new devices like any drug or a machine in healthcare industry, like Wasu was saying, the first rule for us is that do no harm. Uh, so even if you can't help, that's fine, but do no harm. So uh, unfortunately, based on that process, we have to get ethics clearance from, from, from industry, uh, from, from our hospitals to use them on, on, on for patients in extraordinary circumstances, and then probably use the data tomorrow when the certification is going on to assist with the, with the quality and safety of the device. And that's, that's how uh, this conversation reignited between WASU and us, which have been sort of waned in previous months. And, and this is because, as you all probably know, who are all uh, are here in webinar from various parts of India? Uh, that various parts are suffering in, in at various degrees from this COVID. And if you have any family member who has gone through with this, uh, including some of my colleagues, they themselves weren't able to get the beds in their working hospital. It is that bad. Forget about the friends or neighbors or known person, even your own close blood relatives, they weren't able to get into the same hospital. It is so chock a block. My current ICU is running at 170%. There isn't space to walk between the patient's beds. At this point of time, what the actual uh, um, the, the capacity of the hospital is that we have a 60% generally as per, as per guidance, 60% beds will have ventilator, not all 100%. And so when you have 170% occupancy at this point, and I only have 60% uh, ventilators, there is a big gap. I am pretty sure that there are, even if all 170% are not on ventilator, there is a big gap of anything between 20 to 80% of people who need ventilator and are already being given alternatives like a bypass machine, which isn't fulfilling their job, but they had no other choice. And this is, this is where um, um, this, this, uh, this lacuna or this gap has been shared, not just by me and from one hospital chain, but many others uh, in, in Bangalore city that I know fellow colleagues. And, and as much as the machine is, um, yeah. Uh, the, 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 yes, yes. Uh, could you kindly uh, switch on your video if that's possible? Um, so uh, no, the, I think the administrator had to switch it on. I think uh, I don't. I think I don't have that capacity. So it it says uh, that administrator has to switch it on. Um, okay, we have enabled it. If you could, uh, if you have the, uh, uh, you'll have to switch on your camera if you're getting that tab. Otherwise, we can continue. If, if you can find uh, a tab. I think, no problem. No, no, no. Uh, that's that, that's okay. That's that's okay. We'll we'll, we'll just we'll just I think a yeah. couple more minutes and I'll I'll, I'll finish my rant. Yeah. Thank you. Um, no <laughs> so, so essentially, uh, my collaboration with the Indian Institute of Sciences and and the lacunae or, or the or the gaps that we found, particularly in relation to intensive care or sick people who need who are need, who are in need of oxygen supply, are probably are not uh, and their needs aren't being met um, and 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 that's that's been increasing ever so because we are every day passes we have realized that we no longer admitting patients who who don't need oxygen to hospital so ox hospitals now are filled with oxygen dependent patients we are only admitting sicker group of patients to icu which means that the chance of them needing icu 
and also ventilator is higher proportion now compared to maybe three weeks ago. And yes, we are distilling admissions, but then based on the load of the cases, and most of these patients, when they come admitted to hospital, they will not leave because they are so sick and this length of stay becomes a seven to 14 or even many weeks for some of the critically ill patients. We have what we call as a rotating volume of, of the hospitals, which are very low and creating an artificial uh, jam in the system. Now, all of these things make resource utilization all that higher oxygen need all that higher ventilator use all that higher and that's that's where um, the indian Institute of sciences uh, project uh, which which is up to date and 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 is and fit for certification as i see it um, probably needs one last step of boost with the clinical use uh, on on in, in a hospital setting as we are trying to pursue that through our hospital ethics committee at this point of time hopefully we'll get through that in the next couple of days and and then once it is used for a clinical use and it it it's probably ready for drug control of india's certification as well uh, um, and and then mass production with the, with the no limitation of uh, or worry because it is an approved product so this is this is what I'm looking forward to because this wave is still ongoing and we have we are we, are, we haven't reached the peak yet and we see, we can see that the patients are still um, uh, uh, are stuck um, not not getting what they need as as the opening chair has clearly said with the daily experience and uh, now Bangalore has experienced the same impact and I. With this, with, with this highlighting of Lacuna and, and our end user request for more of these devices and, and, uh, and with Vasu's leadership and, and the friendship that uh, we've come to, come to address some of these things and hope the rest of the panelists would explain the journey in a little bit more scientific and detailed way. And I, I hope that this would, uh, this would come to a meaningful, meaningful result and help people in these uh, difficult times. Thank you all for, for the opportunity. We can have the next speaker. Uh, Professor Raghavan, I think you're muted. Uh, so can we introduce, uh, just a minute, uh, let, let me, let me try getting you connected. Professor Agaman, you are self muted. Okay, can you hear me now? Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Justin. Uh, I was just wondering if you could quickly comment on the need currently for oxygen concentrators versus ventilators. If I'm not wrong, there is a bigger pressing need now for oxygen concentrators than there is for ventilators. Is that correct? I think I think both are both are in 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 need. Um, certainly, the oxygen concentrators is designed as a way to reduce the oxygen demand um, deficit at this point. What we are experiencing all over the country, but also in in, in Bangalore circles, in the last number of weeks, there have been there are near misses for many of the hospitals that I know, um, and that. Uh, everybody is now taking extraordinary measures of reducing the targets for oxygen for each patient to see if they can save oxygen save that extra 20 minutes so i guess the to the oxygen concentrators um, in in bulk probably would reduce the reduce the demand on the hospitals and 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 probably would would uh, would uh, um, would buy um, a, a safety for most of the institutions that's number one um, and number two is that um, these could be used in a, in a large scale, C certainly when the beds aren't being available. And I have a feeling if, if there is a big facility that's going to be set up, 
um, a piped gas setup in those set settings for a low oxygen demand patients is going to be very difficult and uh, so infrastructure wise is a big task so oxygen concentrators in bulk at that point will probably would serve um, as a triaging center and holding center until they've been transported to a nearby hospital so if that 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 kind of a triage system if it comes alive ventilators yes uh, the the ratio as i as was mentioned is five to one uh, stands good yeah and would you be able to quickly put a number on the number of concentrators or ventilators that bangalore as a city might need so, like I said, the majority of the hospitals are oxygen beds at this point of time. To an extent, 80% of hospital beds currently are uh, oxygen beds, ox supposedly supposed to supply oxygen. And none of these hospitals have ever used 80% beds as an oxygen oxygen beds ever in, in their lifetime. Um, so that's that's the demand. So when when you when you challenge the upper limit of the hospital's capacity, you are going to get into trouble. And so. Like an 100 bedded hospital would need 80 oxygen ports, and and so even if you reduce it by like replace those pipe to, to with with the concentrators, even in 20 percent, that's a big number to change. 20 percent okay. difference. Yeah. So an upper bound would be the total number of hospital beds in Bangalore, and they would all need at least one oxygen concentrator, and maybe one fifth of them would need a ventilator. Roughly speaking, if one wants to put numbers right. Absolutely. Okay, excellent. Uh, thank you, Justin. Uh, of course, we will please hang on. Uh, we will uh, need your inputs as there will be questions later. And now we will go to Professor Praveen Ramurthy, who has been leading the effort on oxygen concentrators. And I must admit that I have been more of a coordinator and putting together a team of experts in place. Uh, Praveen has been leading the ventilator. Uh, not ventilator, sorry, the oxygen concentrator effort from day one on his own. While one team in Sten started working on the ventilator, he started working on the concentrator. There is some confusion between a oxygen concentrator and a oxygen generator. Uh, I checked with Professor Dasapa today morning. There is another team in IASC that has also made what they call an oxygen generator. The basic principle of operation of the machine that Praveen is going to talk about that we are calling an oxygen concentrator is the same as the basic principle of the machine that they are calling as oxygen generator. The only difference is the one that Praveen will talk about will be able to deliver somewhere between five and 10 liters per minute of oxygen. Uh, to put that number in perspective, the average human being breathes in air at the rate of about 30 liters per minute. Actually, we are an amazing uh, machine ourselves. And the oxygen generator that Professor Dasapa has put together, it's more of like an industrial scale and it can go up to maybe 50 liters per minute. So Praveen's concentrator is about five to 10 liters per minute. That's what he's calling the concentrator and the oxygen generator can deliver up to 50 liters per minute. The principle remains the same. So with that, over to you Praveen. He's put together an oxygen concentrator where I'm guessing the ballpark price is somewhere in the regime of about 20 to 40,000 Indian rupees. Go ahead, Praveen. It's over to you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, you can see my uh, screen? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, I'll start. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks for this uh, um, platform to discuss this. Um, I agree with all the Previous speaker is such a uh, important and uh, interesting uh, uh, system that we have. Uh, it could be uh, made better. That's what. Uh, uh, so and also, uh, I actually just got off from an another uh, discussion with the BBMP, where we are trying to place order for 1,500 oxygen concentrator from China. Nowhere else it's available. But on the same breath. We were uh, discussing with um, other groups uh, from uh, government agencies, various government agencies, that a lot of uh, Chinese uh, concentrators has issues with uh, purity uh, at uh, even at three, four liters per minute. So um, this is not to scare that, not to use a Chinese thing, but the reality is some of them do, some of them do work, and some of them do not. So there is a challenge 
and uh, that's uh, that's where we are right now i will very quickly run through what we have uh, what the story behind how we did this and then where we are right now and then we can take questions uh, based on that so um, so we three of us uh, in our group uh, we started working on um, the oxygen concentrator uh, we are new to this system but of course uh, i am from materials engineering department so we started looking at the materials uh, perspective uh, we started putting it together understand what all the problems and what could uh, what can we do this was uh, early 2020 right and then within a month we were able to come up with a system uh, i'm not going to uh, discuss this so there were enough scary news items that came that we have enough oxygen problem this is way back uh, in 2000 right um uh so we looked at uh, what all out there what do you why do you need oxygen for in medicine how does it uh, connect to covid care i am not sure how all of this what i am showing you here in the left hand side is correct but this is these are the things that are what we could get from literature and on top of this who has put out a, a document showing how to make a oxygen concentrator right so that was openly available to everybody and we searched quite a bit and many many all over the world not just in india i have started making it and all of them none of them were able to get above 40 uh, 50% right that was that was the challenge that's where we stepped in said look there is an opportunity here to uh, do something so let's start looking at little more carefully uh, so uh, that's uh, these are the three guys myself uh, bhaskar and dr arun uh, all three of us got together uh, and then started building very uh, basic system to see whether we can start generating this system design was actually taken from who document which i showed you here um, this is available i can share with uh, anybody uh, as we um, uh, go along all right uh, so uh, while this was happening uh, that's when uh, uh, sid's uh, uh, tatpar scheme uh, head by uh, professor gurumurthy uh, yatish uh, and uh, his entire team got in said they supported uh, for making this I mean, you need money to start making any of these things so uh, they supported with uh, uh, funding and uh logistics too so that's where the whole thing started this was uh, again uh, almost a uh, year ago um this is a team uh, which actually we sat and built the system this photo was taken 3 uh, months ago uh, when our system was almost uh, a final version from the lab um so you have kumar uh, raghava vijay uh, ashika and bhaskar okay so very simple uh, again i will not go through too much technical details but uh, oxygen can be generated by many different uh, techniques we looked at for portable psa is what we are going to use because that is uh, little uh, easier for both generation maintenance and fabrication right uh, so we looked at that uh, how does this work um, again the principle is very simple but making it work the particular uh, particular fashion was the challenge and uh, that's what our journey was so basically psa what happens you have two uh, container filled with a particular kind of zeolite with a particular chemistry and a particular uh, um, uh, size you push air through one system um, uh, this particular uh, bed of zeolite absorbs a um, very uh, 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 forcefully only nitrogen and leaves out everything else so what you are doing is you are separating nitro um, nitrogen with everything else and nitrogen is more than 70% right so uh, hence you are separating oxygen so what you do is one side you push it it separates you open the nitrogen whatever was separated comes out oxygen is left behind while this is happening the second chamber is opened and then that is pushed so you keep doing swing the pressure between one to one chamber to another chamber so that 
you uh, um, separate oxygen uh, sequentially and collect it to one uh, container so that you can give it continuous that's the uh, most simplest explanation of oxygen concentrator right so here the dynamics of how much pressure you put how much packing the zeolites are and what time the residence time for uh, air to be inside the ca um, canister a uh, cartridge and the mechanism uh, efficient mechanism of extracting the separated nitrogen these are all the things that dictates the purity of oxygen and the stability of the system so that is what uh, took us uh, actually uh, three four months to come to a uh, a, a, a stable system uh, which is uh, what we did so this is a schematic these are the diagram the diagrams actually you can get it from uh, the web uh, every it's available everywhere you just google it you can get this the right one is what uh, we got it from who of course as i said we start modifying more optimizing this is a schematic right we started optimizing to understand better to this particular condition that's what we had done uh, so this is where we started with we started with the steel um, so we said this is a pressurized system we need to have a steam so we had a steam uh, uh, steel container we started writing our own codes uh, we had single uh, isolated valves which was very much available everywhere then of course uh, this was the during the covid time we went all around started getting uh, various different uh, uh, components i mean this all we had to do on our own uh, because of the uh, first lockdown right so we are fortunate uh, lucky because we are in bangalore we are able to connect to various different uh, um, small companies and big companies so this is one of them genetics uh, everybody knows so they have fantastic valves so this is what we started to use um, then we i mean I, we sourced various components as i said uh, i'm showing you here um, uh, the heat exchanger valves um, we first started the electronics with just using an arduino then raspberry pi and then we realized all of these are fantastic but then over a period of time there is a drift that happens in the timing uh, the whole electronic system because still uh, however robust this is this is still a hobby system hence we started developing our own electronics of course we did calibrate the flow um, pressure uh, uh, the uh, purity and things like that so our journey of making uh, various different versions of the system uh, began um, so this was the second version then the third version we started using a, a, a simple water filter cartridge can we use that because it's olefinic material and it's biocompatible so i don't need to worry about compatibility uh, uh, portion as we go along so again our software uh, coding uh, started to increase um, make it more accurate better and things like that um, so this again was really the uh, optimization process where uh, we had capability to change the timings and uh, uh, the whole mechanism of switching on and off um, adsorption and desorption process that's what gave us an edge we literally did uh, minimum thousand uh, different uh, experiments before we came to an ideal um, uh, performance right so uh, again parallelly we started to working on oxygen sensor so oxygen sensors uh, we actually i'll show you at the end which is an another very important uh, device you where you need to uh, um, really measure what percentage of oxygen that is coming uh, the literature says i connect all of this i should get 90 percent whether i am getting that or not uh, is what we need to measure and we found out that there are only few available and that too that's imported and uh, it's very expensive so can we make our own uh, oxygen sensor so we not the oxygen sensor but the oxygen sensing uh, unit so we bought oxygen sensor from honeywell we uh, created the complete electronics around it and then started calibrating so that also uh, was done parallelly um, as i said uh, enough timing uh, uh, work that went through before optimizing to present condition so we started getting 
these were again early uh, last uh, april uh, may time where we started to get above 90% at 1 lpm we are getting above 95% we are uh, not sure whether we are really getting it because uh, mm, theoretically anything above 94% is almost you are reaching the limit right so but this was very stable right you change the process something we will see a change in oxygen uh, out, output so we were on the right track so we got um, uh, even for 10 lpm above 82% now we are around uh, 85% for 10 lpm uh, so these are the different um, progress that happened i will really go through a little quick and then we can uh, uh, discuss at the end if there is any question so these are uh, various different uh, versions that came along this was the fourth version this is actually look like a water filter what you have in uh, home uh, this was still running uh, with uh, uh, raspberry pi this is when we started making our own electronics where we started replacing uh, actual uh, relays for timing relays because that had only a few lakhs um, operations then afterwards it starts to drift so we we created our own system uh, make it more robust stable so then we started uh, with our limited um, understanding and our limited uh, exposure to make a product we started putting it together to make it look like a, a product that can be give, given out this was the fifth version then this is what uh, how build was for the fifth version then sixth version looked little more um uh, compact and then we started putting together better performance was this is what the performance within 3 uh, 180 seconds we are able to reach above 90% and then we were able to control uh, oxygen purity uh, very well we moved to the new platform uh, this was the sorry this is the held oxygen sensor where, uh, was made uh, in house and uh, where we uh, um, put a packaging and then i will show you the packaging as we go along okay this is the seventh version uh, where we have uh, uh, where we have uh, um, again uh, almost the final uh, version um, and uh, this is where we started to build uh, this is the seventh version which was there and then we got um, sid uh, reach we were able to rope in people who uh, do product engineering and then we started to put this together we started to look which location how does scientifically um, technically uh, which position it should be there those kinds of things we came up with many different actually the our uh, uh, um, the team which was looking at the design came up with many different designs uh, of course uh, Uh, so uh, once that is happening this was the last version we said we thought this is where we will uh, stop at but this is where we stop this is the final version that has come out of our lab um this was the build process this is how it looks like right now uh, where you have uh, flow output and i will just run a, a video of that Ravin I think we may have lost you This is was so here can we uh, actually okay. sorry sorry yeah go ahead so go ahead i mean i i thought we had lost you in between but go ahead okay Uh, so uh, yes can you hear me we missed yes, your so last one i can see that can you see my screen now yeah we can see your screen but we missed you for the last uh, few half a minute or so can you repeat okay. when you started the video after that we have not uh, the video oh, didn't play and we couldn't hear you Okay can you see the video could you see the video No the video did not play Can you oh, do the video again 
sure 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 let me do that Ravi, what we could do is, otherwise you could run through your. We can all mute our videos. <laughs> we can mute our videos so that. Uh... Can you see the video now? Yes, Maybe but it's will... slow. Uh, so I what think I do is, really at the end of the talk, I can show the video. Um, yes. It's basically showing, it's basically showing how do you switch it on, what all the connections are there. Um, I can come back to that later stage. Okay, I'll continue. So uh, the performance was standardized. Uh, so the next few things that are most important is pre-clinical validation. Of course, TUV and UL certification. Um, uh, I think uh, uh, both uh, Professor Vasu and uh, uh, Dr. Justin uh, 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 rightly said that there is absolutely no uh, certification process from ICMR from uh, from ICMR for oxygen concentrator. So there is a process to develop something, but there is some clinical validation to do that. There is some design of experiment that has been done. Uh, we are in discussion. Um, actually, right now, uh, system is going to uh, BMRCI for uh, evaluating this. Um, once that is done, uh, of course, TUV and UL will do the certification. Uh, but that is only for electrical safety or EMI shielding and things like that. But it, it, that won't do any uh, oxygen or how the, how it would uh, perform clinically or kind of thing. So that is one. Um, and since uh, because of so much overwhelming response, uh, IIC and SID has taken on itself to help us with this program. As I said, uh, Times Group uh, um, SID team. Uh, it's called Tatpar. Uh, they have taken as a single point contact for taking this further. Uh, any NDAs, uh, licensing, technical discussion, any of these things uh, they will do. Of course, I am always there to help any technical thing. Uh, but uh, since making it a one single window would be helpful to taking this further. Right. That is that. Second, uh, the challenges. Uh, in this is uh, there are three four components first one of them is zeolite, zeolite uh, we have i mean you can get all of this data which i am showing from web uh, but i am telling you that these four components are the most critical components for a manufacturer zeolite is a major challenge right now because uh, the demand so there is an effort to get it uh, uh, at a central place or groups together come together take it and then then distribute kind of thing i think uh, there is enough uh, push that also is coming from the government side so i would suggest if somebody is interested to start making this uh, make a group uh, come with sid or any other group together we go to the uh, as a source to a uh, manufacturer and can get this that is one second Compressor. Compressor, this has to be a particular uh, specification and above to get a particular purity. So there are many companies. Uh, uh, this specification, again, uh, what I have put is what is available on the web. Uh, you can search on the Google and then get it. But then more specification and more details, I can come back to you as we go along. Third one is the control board. Again, control board, I see a lot of do, DIY people all over India started to make their own, which is what we did almost one and a half years ago. So I would uh, uh, suggest to anybody, uh, instead of reinventing the wheel, you can go ahead with the control board, what we have. Uh, it can be given to people, um, as uh, Professor Vasu suggested, the modes that we have. So uh, instead of doing reinventing the wheel, you can go ahead, take this, including the firmware, all of this can be uh, obtained through that right and the fourth one is valve i showed you the picture of valve from genetics genetics is a fantastic i am sure they can also make but uh, there were some challenges in the actual design of that uh, um, what was available so we went with a couple of um, uh, fabricators to build a specific uh, valve that is suitable for this so we have done that uh, exercise uh, so those things are all um, ready to take further so this um, so this the whole system was ready in last uh, last august 
but the, because of the lack of interest for whatever reason uh, including uh, everybody is saying the chinese ones are available why do we need this kind of thing um, we had not done anything but we went ahead with kept on modifying things so for example one of the thing which we did was we incorporated this oxygen sensor inside the system itself so that you can get all the including the oxygen percentage data in a smartphone so that that can be obtained to a doctor right so doctor need not wait uh, only know how much uh, quantity and what time the oxygen was given he can also know what percentage it was given so that's uh, one uh, thing that was developed uh, last one year in addition to that as i said handheld oxygen sensor which we have uh, in house uh, built and demonstrated uh, which is uh, pretty stable robust and um, uh, way less expensive than what is available in the market uh, with that again uh, there are only uh, one standard that is available 80601 uh, which we try to ac uh, accommodate everything in what we are doing in addition to that the test that is uh, suggested by tuv or uh, um, ul is what is listed so uh, my point of showing this slide is we have done uh, enough uh, background um, work to look at what uh, testings needs to be done which is underway uh, so probably in uh, uh, few weeks all of this will be complete uh, but if somebody is interested to take this further this is the right time start lining up uh, the schematic design and supply chain management which is the most critical factor in all of these things. Uh, okay, I think uh, with that, I will stop. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, please let me know. Uh, Professor Agavan, we have lots of questions. Uh, I think, Professor Agavan, you are on mute. Okay, thanks. Uh, I believe I was muted there. Uh, I believe there are lots of questions. We are running a little short on time. Maybe we can finish the next two presentations quickly and we can take all the questions in a single shot if that is fine. But I'm guessing there'll be one question, Praveen, if you could answer this very quickly, that would be upmost on everybody's minds. You started by saying that most of the concentrators available in the market wouldn't go beyond 40 or 50% oxygen but you managed to go at 5 SLPM to beyond 90 and at 10 SLPM to beyond 85. So what is the critical design difference in your concentrator that enables this difference? Raveen, are you there? there are, yeah, yeah, so there are two things. One uh, is definitely the electronics and the dynamics of the, uh, the connections. So electronics actually giving the stability of the switching and controlling that uh, over a long period of time what uh, made it more stable. So th if there is a uh, switching problem, even for one, um, it misfires in between, then you will have a problem with uh, um, oxygen mixing with nitrogen and then your percentage goes down. So that control was one of our uh, major things. Okay, so the key thing, if I may summarize what you said is electronic control of the pressure swing adsorption mechanism, correct? Correct. That's the key. Excellent. Uh, so I think we will now move on to uh, Professor Shushoban Avasti, who is now leading the ventilator effort. And the story of the ventilator kind of mirrors the story of the concentrator in terms of all the challenges people have had to go through during uh, COVID times, lockdown and so on to get it done. And both the concentrator and the ventilator were very strongly supported by uh, Professor Gurumurti and the Society for Innovation and Development at IAC. So with that, over to you, Sushoban. Uh, thank you. I hope I'm audible. Let me just quickly share my screen. Uh, just one second. Okay, I. Okay, can you see my screen by any chance, Professor? Not yet. Not yet. I'm wondering if the organizers have to enable screen sharing for Sushogun. 
that's been done, uh, Professor Gabriel. Uh, Dr. Ossi, you would have received a lab for uh, making uh, you the presenter. Um, yes, but to, okay, there it is. Microsoft. Yeah, we can see your screen now, Sushoban. Go ahead. Thank you. So, uh, okay. Uh, so, thank you for joining. Uh, so, I'm going to talk about indigenous ICU ventilator. Uh, the story uh, started last year uh, when there was a panic and there was a general understanding that there's going to be a shortage of uh, ventilators in fight against COVID. Uh, so, we started developing one. And there was a lot of support from IIC, etc. But let, before we even get to the details, maybe what is a ventilator? This is the simplest figure I could find online. Essentially, ventilator allows you to breathe artificially. It's a system that pushes air into your lungs and then allow sucks those that air out and does this periodically uh, so that you don't have to uh, function. You don't have to do this on your own because often so during can I, so Shoban, can I interrupt you for a minute? So sure. what I see on the screen is a black box under user feedback at Manipal Hospital. OK, that's better. All right. OK, so what a ventilator is, is a, a space. I, Hope you can. Yeah. So it just pushes air in and out, so the patient doesn't have to breathe. Uh, when we talk about an ICU ventilator, what that means is the patient is under sedation uh, and is not breathing at all on their at all on their uh, own, and the machine is the only one that is breathing for them. So it's a critical piece of equipment. It needs to be designed very carefully so that neither do you damage the lung, and you do deliver reliable breaths because clearly uh, the patient will not survive if even a few breaths are uh, missed. So that is the main challenge. The fundamental design of such a system would be relatively simple. The complexity comes from the control logic, the alarm systems, and making it reliable. So we started in March 2020. Uh, the thing looked like an octopus. This is something on the left. Uh, over a period of the next few months, we were able to get it to a, into a system that looked like something on the right uh, that met the performance specifications for what a ventilator should be doing. And at that point, for various reasons, there was no interest in the market to sort of take this any forward. So we left it at that and moved on with our regular jobs. And that is where it stood as TRL8. In fact, if you're interested, I urge you to click on the QR code on the screen. It will take you to a YouTube video that we had up, uh, uploaded uh, back in June of 2008, 2020. Uh, where we are today uh, is we have a system which we believe is at TRL9. And it's in, uh, we have assembled two such systems. One of them we sent to Manipal. I'll show you a video later. And one of them we are planning to send to Intertech, which is our partner in uh, certifying the system. Because the critical piece, again, is to get it certified, the critical piece, because this is a critical piece of equipment. Uh, you can look at the specifications. If you're familiar with ventilations, they would me mean something to you. If you're not familiar with ventilator, that doesn't matter. Uh, the summary is that this is a ventilator that can be effective in the fight against COVID and can be used in an ICU setting. The target cost that we are looking at for this ventilator in terms of just its cost is probably around 1.5 lakhs, uh, plus minus some number depending upon the exact components, uh, which would make it extremely competitive to any ventilator that is on the market. Ventilators of similar specifications start somewhere between six, seven lakhs in the market and go all the way up to 25 lakhs. Uh, so this is the just a quick video. I hope you can see, but this is the system getting tested at Manipal. Um, Again, this is not certified testing. This was not on a patient. This was on an artificial lung. The point of the exercise was to get a uh, to get feedback from Manipal on what they think is the system, what can be improved, what they like about it, what they don't like about it. Uh, I think Justin can correct me, but to summarize, they think the system works. It would do the job on a patient if it was connected, provided we can scale it up, provided we can get it certified, and provided uh, that it gets uh, yeah it gets into their hands. So uh, we have uh, uh, we are on a very ambitious timeline. Uh, we started on May 1st, and within this month, we plan to make 25 of these designs that can then be given as prototypes to whoever wants to test them or make them. Uh, you can the goal is to by 25th or 26th of this month, we should have 25 ventilators in hand. And for that, we have partnered with Intertech, which is a certification agency. We hope to get a basic certification started it would not be finished uh, the full certification takes three months but a basic performance certification would start somewhere by may on may 15th and in parallel we plan to manufacture 25 ventilators that uh, vastwind will make which who is our manufacturing partner uh, anup will tell more about that in his presentation 
Uh, one of the things with ventilators are that because they are critical care equipment, not everybody can make a ventilator. Even the place where it's manufactured must be medically qualified. So it's very important to partner with people who have experience in making medical equipment because the certification and the, other, and the manufacturing details are significantly different from a typical manufacturing system. Um, for the, all of this, we need money. <laughs> uh, Vastment has kindly agreed to fund the investment of the first 10 ventilators. So that is something they will make at cost, at their own cost. But in order to get to that 25 number, we need to make 15 more. And just the bomb cost of that would come out to be around uh, 21 lakhs. Some amount of design modification will have to done, be done so that this is a mass manufacturable system. Uh, I mean, as a when we make one or two units, there are things we can do on the fly. But in a manufacturable setting, you have the, more thought needs to be put out in how will you calibrate the system, test the system, and a lot of tooling and jigs need to be made for that. And but finally, and the most important is the testing and the certification. Uh, the relevant standard is IEC 60601, and full testing, which will take a couple of months, will cost somewhere around 10 lakhs. So that is what we want to embark upon. Uh, whatever 25 ventilators we make during this whole process uh, will be sold at cost. Uh, we don't intend to make money off it. Um, because I'm short on time, I'll just get to the summary. So in summary, an ICU grade ventilator has been developed. It's a robust control system. It has been tested by doctors. In terms of user feedback, it works. Uh, what we need to do is get it certified, start mass manufacturing it, and we aim to at least manufacture 25 of these units by 30th of May. What we are looking for are manufacturing partners, people who are certified in manufacturing medical equipment, specifically ventilators, or are interested in getting into the area. All these designs will be available, all the IP will be available. We just need your partnership. And all this partnership will come with some amount of investment, so that investment. Uh, this is just the team. I just flashed the names. It's too large to mention it, but it, I would be remiss to take the credit for designing or developing the system. It was a very large group effort. Uh, that included people like Justin who gave their valuable time despite being overworked in COVID uh, and also Anoop and Manjunath who gave the industrial expertise to get this all done. Uh, thank you. I, I'll take any questions you have. Uh, thank you, Sushogan. Maybe we'll come to questions uh, together at the end. I think it's time that we quickly move over to Anoop. But I think before we do that, it's important enough to state that the ventilator, if not properly made or used, can kill a person. And that's why we are being very careful here. Uh, just to put that in perspective, the pressure in which all of us are sitting right now is what we call one atmosphere, or it's about 1,000 centimeters of water column. Now, if a ventilator pushes more than 30 centimeters of water column into your lungs above this atmosphere pressure, and it doesn't do that in a controlled fashion, it can kill you. So that is the kind of control we are talking about in these machines, which is very critical. And so I don't want people who are thinking of taking it up to manufacture it lightly. OK, it's taken a lot of time to make it, build it and give us the confidence to say, OK, the world can go ahead, build it and somebody can use it. OK, with that, it's over to you, Anup. Uh, we have been working with him, like Sushoban pointed out from day one, along with CAS Technologies, and they've been helping us. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity, and we are really looking forward to take these products onto the market along with the uh, uh, IIC team and other teams who are uh, interested in taking this forward. I'll just uh, just give me one minute. I will uh, to share my screen. Let me know once you can see the screen, please. We can see it. We can see it, Anu. Okay, so just me just uh, give a background of WASMED. We are primarily a cardiology products manufacturer. We do therapy and diagnostic devices. And uh, we were established in 2018 in India, but we have a facility in UAE that has been operating from 2003 onwards. We are an ISO 13485 certified company with CDSO approval for manufacturing medical devices. And our UAE facility, we already are uh, having the PMDA Japanese approval, we have all the products that is CE marked. So just to, in a nutshell, what I just want to highlight is that we are a medical device manufacturer with uh, uh, certification and experience in taking these products into the market. 
Uh, we have in our uh, Bangalore facility, we have around 25,000 square feet uh, specialized uh, uh, manufacturing facility that includes a clean room of around 3,500 square feet. This is an ISO 7 clean room and, and uh, we have experience manufacturing complex and uh, medical devices, including implantable devices and also medical electronics. And also we are a grant uh, recipient from National Biomedical Mission for innovative products. So we are working along with the uh, Indian Institute of Center for Nanosciences for some of the very smaller sensors in the uh, MEM sensors, which is used in uh, measuring pressure inside the heart. So that is our association with the uh, uh, IIC from last two years. And uh, we also have experience in IEC certification. We have done it for multiple products from our side. Uh, just coming on to the bomb construction. So uh, just to give you a background in terms of what we are doing for the current projects is that when we started in 2000, uh, uh, that is 20, 2020 March, our main target was to get an ICU ventilator that can be manufactured within India. And uh, we were associated with the SENSE team and they have been putting an amazing effort with regard to getting those products uh, out by uh, last uh, September. And we have been discussing on taking it forward. Unfortunately, at the time, uh, there was not that much pull in the market when we were discussing with various uh, government bodies and other organizations. So it got a little delayed, but at the same time, the interest is still there. And now we really want to take this forward and we are already sponsoring around uh, 10 ventilators to be fully assembled under our investment. And also uh, then when we came to the oxygen concentrators, we were working in terms of 25 uh, oxygen concentrators to be also manufactured from uh, our uh, investment. So just looking at the bomb itself, so we have been working on the last couple of weeks on improving on the bomb and looking at the DFM on the device. And uh, as such, uh, we have identified almost all the sources uh, for the bomb and uh, for the current 25 numbers and also to a scale up of 100 numbers. So majority around 30% uh, of the bomb is an imported components and around uh, 10 to 15% is electronics and remaining are all sourced within India. So we have engaged with uh, most of the suppliers for this and uh, uh, the orders has already gone out for this 25 numbers and we really want to scale it up to the 100 numbers at the earliest possible. On the ventilators also, like uh, Professor Shushoban has pointed out, uh, we have been working for the last uh, one year plus on this. And now the device is a stable device and uh, the composition of the bomb itself is around 30% of the electronics around uh, uh, remaining coming on to fabricated components and uh, also the pneumatic components. Now, from the scale-up perspective, we have already allocated an ESG facility around uh, 20,000 square feet within our facility. Uh, we are not a, we are a medium-sized company. We have around uh, 50 production staff right now working with us and we have allocated a team specifically for this product and uh, the team can assemble on our first assessment around 20 to 30 devices per a day and as we add more team members we can scale it up uh, further upwards. Uh, the supply source as I have informed we have already identified including for a couple of challenges as Professor Praveen was uh, identifying especially on zeolite and compressors. So this zeolite we have identified a lithium based supplier and already placed for 150 kilos and we are working with them to increase the quantities. And uh, second is with regard to uh, getting the compressors also we had 25 is already ordered, 75, we have requested a back order on that, so it will take some time for that to come in, but still we are hoping that by the time this 25 is completed and we are able to take it to the market, we can scale it up to the 100. So uh, from that, uh, the critical imports with longer leader time also, uh, we have reached out to around 100 and we are looking at local sourcing also, but at the same time, we don't want to affect the performance of the device, which the professors, uh, province team has worked on. And from our side, uh, from Basmat side, what we are offering is we have worked on, as I said in the beginning, like we are sponsoring the 25 oxygen concentrators and 10 ventilators. And we are also supporting the team with regard to certification and clinical testing. We have experience in that. From the enclosure side, we are working on the DFM so that uh, manufacturing is made uh, smoother. So our uh, mechanical team is working along with uh, Professor 
Pravin team also, and also some of the fabricators locally in Bangalore on this. So we bring in the ex medical device expertise, the ISO certifications, and the CDS approval for this uh, manufacturing these products so that the product meets to all the international requirements. And this is a good product with regard to performance. What we want to make sure is that from the manufacturability also, it comes out uh, as equivalent to any other medical device. A couple of challenges we are facing, like I said, we are a medium-sized company. Working capital is something that we need to look at. Already, we have committed for the 25 oxygen concentrators and ventilator and 10 ventilators, but we would look at uh, some pre-ordering and distribution support to take scale this up further. There are a few challenges like uh, from the announced lockdown that we need to look at and also a few imports are coming in. So we would request any support that can be provided to speed up this. So like Professor Shoban was referring that we are target is the 30th of May where we would like to get these products, whatever we have committed to uh, get it into the assembly, finished assembly. Uh, from our side, uh, we have a testing lab also established primarily for the ventilator. So we have the certify certification, uh, calibrated certification system is available and also calibrated lungs are available. So just make sure that all the ventilators and uh, uh, we can use this for oxygen concentrators also because it has a calibrated oxygen sensors also integrated to it. So this setup is available and we can scale up this testing as the volume of production increases. And uh, just a quick update as uh, 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 Professor Srinivasar uh, has selling. So we just had, uh, we were, uh, our UAE team were recipients of NASA JPL ventilator last year. So this was uh, developed by NASA JPL for supporting the COVID situation. Uh, just to differentiate between this ventilator, this is an emergency ventilator with manual support. I just want to highlight this because this is also available and we have assembled multiple units of this and any support that uh, this can give in the current situation, we will be happy to give these products uh, to the market. And uh, so this is a basic emergency ventilator compared to the IIC ICU ventilator. So the feature sets is only one simple mode that is available and uh, multiple controls are manual but still it will meet to any pre-ICU requirement, this ventilator will meet the requirement. This is having an FDA EUA authorization. So that is a, just a summary. So this is my contact number. I manage the operations for WASMED and my email address is anupawogis at wasmed.in and mobile is 9900263325. So anybody who is interested in partnering or I already have a lot of requests that came in, but and we are happy to support, like we said, uh, we are not looking this as a profit uh, uh, enterprise. We are looking at uh, how to support IIC and to take it into the market so that it helps the market situation. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Anu. So, Bindu, I think from our side, we are done. I request you to take over from yeah. here and coordinate yeah. the rest uh, of the session. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Agaman and uh, colleagues from IIC and Vasmed. Um, we have an overwhelming number of questions, uh, but uh, in the interest of time. Request. One yes, request. Pamela. Uh, so, Pavan Agarwal from, uh, would like to take the stage and uh, make a few comments. Sure, sure. Uh, thank you, Pamela. Uh, yeah. So, um, we have Mr. Pavan Agarwal, uh, uh, Secretary, uh, Ministry of Commerce. Uh, with us and i'll request asif to please make him uh, we, we will enable uh, his speaker link so that he can make his remarks uh, welcome mr agarwal we'll just give us a uh, give us a bit uh, we will make you uh, we will uh, enable your audio so he's here in his personal capacity okay uh, okay uh, thank you uh, for that clarification Mr. Agarwal, if you could raise your hand and my colleague would then make you uh, enable your audio, please. I have given permission. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Thanks. Agarwal. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. So, uh, Pamela, you know, I think uh, this was really fantastic. So much of work has been done and uh, your initiative of bringing uh, so many stakeholders together on one platform is very encouraging. And I'm also very proud that uh, uh, the Indian Institute of Science 
has taken lead in this because I have very close association with the Indian Institute of Science. When I was in the Ministry of HRD, uh, responsible for the Institute of Science Affairs in the Ministry of HRD, now Ministry of Education. So kudos to Institute of Science for making it happen. Now, obviously, I think uh, uh, the importance and urgency of for doing what we are trying to do is all very well understood and stated. I can, you know, even though Pamela mentioned that I'm here in my personal capacity, but I think uh, these days personal and official capacities are all getting mixed up, you know. So <laughs> we are in a crisis uh, where what, wherever, whatever we can contribute, we should. So as a special secretary logistics in the Ministry of Commerce and Industries, you know, we have under the DPIIT a startup uh, unit, a startup uh, ecosystem. And I'll be very happy to bring uh, those folks into the fold to support uh, this work uh, that is being done. I will talk to the additional secretary concerned so that more and more startups, uh, you know, and can be reached out and we can we can do things at scale because what is needed today is uh, being able to do things at scale. From the logistics point of view, I think uh, you mentioned about some challenges on GST, some challenges around logistics, imports. So that is my personal uh, responsibility. And in case there are specific issues that are pointed out, uh, you know, my office will be very happy to coordinate to ensure that uh, it happens. On funding, obviously, you know, I'm not able to commit any funding from the government side on this, but uh, I'm sure we can figure out how can that can be organized. But more importantly, I'm sure that many people on this call and man, many people that I know of, you know, they would be interested in making initial investments at least to draw, you know, take up uh, these initiatives to a little larger scale. I have on this call invited uh, Mr. Sanjay Jain from Electro, which is a mid-sized company into, in equipment manufacturing. And uh, they have very, uh, they have a fantastic track record in terms of turnaround times and manufacturing capabilities. And uh, he has already conveyed to me uh, on, a, on social media that he would be willing to fund uh, this initiative to the next stage of development. So I will connect uh, Sanjay, uh, or if Sanjay is there on the line, we can also get him for two minutes on the call. Uh, I leave it to you, uh, Bindu and uh, Pamela. And that's all from my side and full support and uh, uh, from the government of India, you can count on me as your point of contact in Delhi, because all of you are based largely in Bangalore. So I think you can, I can become your single point of contact in Delhi to take care of issues with approvals, with ICMR, with drug controller, and everyone else. I've already reached out to ICMR who have confirmed that they have nothing, uh, they, have, <laughs> you know, they have no uh, direct role in this space. But in case there is a role, we can uh, definitely facilitate that. Thank you very much. Thank you. So thanks, thanks, Pavan, for those uh, very, very encouraging words and taking in your typical style, taking the ownership and and making yourself available. I think uh, a lot of the people in the audience, I see we have more than 220 people uh, in the audience right now. So people will definitely be reaching out to you. Thank you very much. Um, so Bindu, yeah. do you want to take it from there? Yeah. No. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Agarwal, and thank you, Pamela. Uh, uh, I see Mr. Sanjay Jain is there in the audience. And um, if Mr. Jain would like to make any remarks, we could uh, enable your audio. Uh, Mr. Jain? You can, uh, you can unmute Mr. Jain. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, Mr. Jain, uh, Mr. Sanjay Jain, you're self-muted. If you could unmute yourself and uh, if you would uh, want to make any remarks at this point of time. I have Hi. Him. Good afternoon. Am I audible now? 
Yes. Yes, you are. Yeah. Uh, so it's definitely an incredible journey, I would say, uh, from India perspective. And uh, considering the crisis we are in right now, uh, nothing could have been better than this opportunity which has come up where we can actually do a lot. So I've been in touch with uh, uh, China also, and there is a crisis everywhere in terms of availability of equipment. So if we can do something in India, we would be very keen to support. I have taken details of Mr. Anu. I'll get in touch with him. And as a company, whatever we can extend support, even including logistics, GST, everything we are willing to help you out, sir. Including fund support to, to reach out to the masses. We would be keen. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very, very much, much Mr. Jain, for the offer. Yeah, Pamela. Yeah. I think we can go to the next presentation. Sanjay, you may be interested in the other presentation also. We have another company which has a, a concentrator ready and uh, let's hear from them and they may need some yeah. support also. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you, Pamela. Thank you, Mr. Jain, for that uh, very generous offer. Uh, Mr. Himanshu Gupta is our next speaker and he will be talking about his experience of uh, picking up uh, oxygen concentrators from a man from a manufacturer that he's partnering with and supplying to the hospital. So that part of the journey. Uh, Mr. Gupta, over to you. Thank you. So uh, I'm a I'm actually a part of uh, an organization uh, called Roundtable India, which is a pan India not for profit zero overhead uh, charitable organization for people between the age of 18 to 40, which believes in service through fellowship. Uh, we have our presence in uh, more than 100 cities, having four and a half thousand members uh, spread over 300 chapters. And uh, our long term project is actually freedom to education, wherein we are focusing on educating underprivileged children uh, by building infrastructure in rural schools, uh, mostly in partnership uh, with the various state governments. Uh, we have actually so far built more than 7,100 uh, 7, uh, classrooms in more than 3,000 schools across the country impacting 7.86 million uh, underprivileged uh, children. So apart from these, we apart from this uh, initiative, we also uh, run a lot of um, smaller uh, charitable uh, initiatives uh, from time to time. And uh, currently we are doing a lot of COVID relief uh, work. So uh, which is, um, uh, we have actually set up a national COVID relief task force, uh, which is set up in more than 100 cities. So the network is in 100 cities and we are helping in organizing the needy and the patients uh, uh, medicines, oxygen beds, ICU beds, injections, ventilators, uh, plasma, ambulance, and uh, the most uh, importantly, which is needed by them is uh, oxygen concentrators. So uh, we, we have been uh, doing this effort of organizing it. Uh, we are also looking at uh, uh, setting up, uh, uh, raising funds to set up uh, various uh, facilities in various hospitals and uh, through the help of other NGOs and government bodies. So uh, it is basically in this search of ours for the oxygen concentrators is when uh, we actually uh, researched and found out that uh, whatever was available today in the country was all only Chinese uh, concentrators. So uh, all these Chinese concentrators coming in into the market uh, are being sold at uh, uh, fancy prices and um, that too with advance uh, uh, booking and uh, now once you make a payment today in 100% advance the machine will be delivered to you in 15 days from the date of payment and uh, there is no guarantee from the uh, manufacturer because obviously he is Chinese uh, there, there is no warranty there is no after sale service uh, 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 most of the uh, importers have made fancy brochures giving their own specs and uh, who, claiming warranties, claiming uh, after sale services, uh, which are actually not from the manufacturer. And uh, uh, they have been uh, uh, importing it, even not knowing what is the output of the concentrator, what is the purity percentage or concentration percentage of the concentrator. And these machines have been flooded in the market. We very well understand that uh, the need of the concentrators is there today. There is a shortage. That's why the masses in uh, our country have no choice but to buy these concentrators without even knowing whether the 5 liter machine or the 7 liter machine or the 10 liter machine which they are keeping at their homes will actually be useful for them when it is needed by them. And uh, uh, so uh, 
that is that is basically when we um, try to see if we can actually get a good uh, imported product so uh, out of all the products impo being imported i would not say that all products are bad but yes maybe 20% of them are there who can still help you in that initial phase when you are needing the concentrator before reaching the hospital or even post uh, for post uh, uh, covid treatment care at home um, now in this whole journey we try to see and find out whether we have indian manufacturers for these oxygen 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 concentrators and we were quite surprised that today uh, apart from some names which are popular in india which is philips or bpl there is no indigenous indian manufacturer uh, manufacturer in the country who is selling or making oxygen concentrators uh, this this search actually made me reach out to a friend of mine who is also a member of our organization mr rajesh ramanandan is also there in the call today uh, wherein uh, he mentioned that uh, they are uh, in the uh, they are in the final stage of uh, actually uh, manufacturing and launching indian oxygen concentrators which is being manufactured uh, in tamil nadu and uh, they are in fact awaiting the final certifications from some of the government bodies for them to start uh, producing in mass and uh, uh, selling it uh, in the indian market so uh, that 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 is what basically uh, i wanted to share from uh, from the ngo point of view or from uh, people who are actually working on the field who are trying to help the people because uh, the the fact is that today we are getting hundreds of calls wherein uh, from people across the country saying i need the oxygen concentrator today i need it today even the worst past is because they don't, there are no concentrators available in the indian market they are all being imported the people the same importers are bringing these concentrators they are actually uh, for ready stock they are selling it at three times four times the price which is there uh, versus the price which you would be paying them in advance and then booking and getting it after 15 days so uh, and and the people are buying it i mean there are there are calls we get saying they are offering i times the money and saying we just need it today just get it at to us at any cost so i think uh, 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 there is there is definitely a dire need for these indian oxygen concentrators more companies of indian oxygen concentrators to come into the market uh, one to obviously uh, uh, make good this gap supply gap which is there and also to ensure that people are not fooled by buying wrong chinese products thinking they have got an oxygen concentrator but Uh, when it comes to use for them it's not used i also got some feedback in fact by some people that they bought this oxygen concentrator and uh, their doctor one when they checked it or they showed it to them they said that this is not even releasing oxygen the output is not even oxygen it's just normal air so that's that's the situation today so yeah so on that note i would like to request uh, uh, mr rajesh uh, uh, to take over from here thank you himanshu for setting the context uh, mr rajesh ragunandan your partner who's uh, manu uh, manufacturing uh, oxygen concentrators he will speak next next uh, mr ragunandan you are self muted if you could unmute yourself please thank you yes. thank you so much uh, mr paul good afternoon to all the Uh, panelists present here, and I think it's a wonderful forum to understand uh, the need of the R at this point. There's oxygen concentrators uh, across the country, and on the same pursuit, uh, I mean, I've been engaged in uh, uh, distribution of few of the medical uh, wellness products and medicines, uh, predominantly based on cancer-related products and uh, hygiene products. And in the pursuit of uh, the urgency which is required for oxygen for oxygen concentrators in the country, kind of led me towards uh, looking out for uh, Indian manufacturer, and that's when as much just mentioned that you know there are not many uh, or not even anybody at this point at least in our search we were completely unable to locate a indian manufacturer and at the same point is where uh, you know we are a team of young uh, enthusiasts who are also uh, you know working on to produce an indian uh, uh, made in india oxygen concentrator was being developed in tamil nadu and i think we have done all the prototypes and we are in the in the phase of uh, getting the final certification done from the few of the government bodies i would uh, like to play a small uh, a quick video if you can get access so that you can just show the pro, the last prototype you know which is ready uh, to go to the market kind of a stuff uh, would it be possible to give me a screen access uh, we will give screen access to you rajesh 
Yeah. Please check. You would have received a message on your screen. I'll request my colleague Asif to help you. Uh, yes, yes, I did get it. Okay. Screen. You can see your screen. Anji, uh, So how do we? Act? This being a. Uh, you can open your screen. So we can see your screen. You can just play it and it will be seen yeah. by us. Hello. Bathroom, you say? Yeah, you want to enable the audio? A number uh, is up audio low hai. You can in increase the audio if you want. Look, we have uh, we have uh, one of the technical uh, persons to talk about this. Just have to speak. Uh, audio as such. Rajesh, do you want to maximize that video screen on your desktop or laptop? Full screen. You may want to go to full So can you regulate the, the, the flow level up to how many liters per minute do you have? Yeah, uh, so we have uh, two models presently that we're working on. One is a seven liter model and one is a 15 liter uh, model. I, I have uh, Mr. Manoj uh, Panuswamy on the call with us. He's our technical head and he's the man behind the entire design. Uh, can you kindly give access to Mr. Manoj uh, so that? Uh, yeah, Mr. Manoj, uh, if you can switch on your audio and video also. Uh, Manoj, can you hear us? Manoj needs to unmute himself from the screen and then he can speak. Uh, he have unmuted himself. Uh, can you speak, sir? Manoj, you're there? Uh, we are not able to uh, listen to you, sir. Uh, Manoj, can you just unmute yourself, please? Well, maybe Manoj can come back later. We can proceed from here. And whenever he is yeah. available, you can. Yeah, so uh, coming back to the thing, yes. So that is what uh, the development has been, and we are awaiting a few uh, certifications at this point. So once the certifications are on, uh, we'll be ready to go to the market. And uh, yeah, as uh, the biggest challenge at this point is this Chinese concentrators, we have been, uh, been flooded in the market. And unfortunately, the little knowledge that people have about concentrators in terms of what is the right product to use, and would the concentrator work at what level of the COVID patient? Is it, is it a home machine or is it something that has to be used at a, a hospital? I think these are the general questions or these are the most important questions which are there in uh, people's minds at this point. And uh, most importantly, the past, uh, after sales service support. And these are the things which are, you know, and since this being a life-changing device, our primary concentration is to bring the best product 
uh, to the people and the focus is absolutely on that. And we will definitely look forward for all the support from the panelists who are present here to give us, uh, you know, the uh, way forward in terms of uh, be the certification or the procurement of uh, components and raw material. Go, we have all the things in place. Yes, we definitely uh, need all your support to make sure that we cater to the maximum number of people. And uh, let me see if is Manoj uh, back to is Manoj. Manoj, can you un, are you able to take a tube? Because I'm not the technical person behind the thing. Uh, Manoj is a technical man who would be able to answer more of your technical questions. I guess there is some network issue with Manoj. So what is the name of this company? It's Oxogen. Huh? The brand's name is Oxogen. The you can type your details in the chat so that people can access that later and they can reach uh, out to you wherever Mr. required so that we can absolutely, absolutely uh, mr manoj can you rejoin uh, yourself i think it may work we can't able to uh, listen to you yeah thank you Okay, so in the meantime, do you want to take a few questions and when Manoj comes in, we will, uh, uh, you know, let him speak. So, Bindu, you want to yeah. take a few questions? Please, please. We can. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, uh, so, Rajesh uh, uh, and Himanshu and the other panelists, uh, we have a whole uh, uh, set of questions and I'll request my colleague Anurag um, uh, to help uh, step in here and help with the questions. Um, to start with, if we could uh, pick up questions on the supply chain uh, piece of this entire uh, equation. Um, so uh, Anurag, uh, there were some questions that we received uh, regarding uh, the raw material, availability of raw material, sources of uh, sourcing of raw material. So um, would you like to ask those questions, Anurag, uh, to the panelists? Sure. Uh, so one of the important thing which has been asked is regarding zeolite. So zeolite with 13x with 3 mm bead size is widely available in India with lower cost kg. Can we use 3 mm size bead? Can we achieve 33% purity with this size? Zeolite is one of the critical components which someone has asked the question. And oxygen, liquid or gas, another question has been asked by, by someone. Someone has also asked, they have nitrogen converters with them. How can they use that uh, uh, to convert it into oxygen generators from nitrogen generators? So these are maybe two questions can be uh, answered first. We can go ahead with other questions later. So anyone from the panel may like to ask, answer this question? Yeah. I think I Naveen answer. should be able to take up this first zeolite question very easily. Yeah. So uh, three mm uh, for oxygen concentrator cannot be uh, used. Uh, and also 13 x um, uh, either sodium based or without sodium based can be used but it is not efficient once it's not efficient you will have to change the volume of zeolite that is used that means you have to make a bigger uh, uh, cartridge but if you make a bigger cartridge the whole uh, back flow has to be changed so your pump will change heat uh, uh, uh thermal management change so everything will change us even though theoretically you can make uh, oxygen out of this to get uh, again uh, complete uh, um, optimization process has to happen and uh, um, i haven't come across any other uh, um, oxygen concentrators anywhere in the world who are used uh, either sodium or uh, without sodium um, 13x uh, to produce oxygen so lithium based 0.4 to 0.8 is the most important uh, for converting over so the, the connected question is from the Indian Army, one of the officers have asked, we have nitrogen generators, PSAs, and they want guidance on how they can convert those nitrogen generators into oxygen generators. Is it possible? Can any guidance be given to them? I think uh, there's one group from IIT Bombay has uh, successfully worked on it. Uh, so they can go to them, but if there are somebody here, 
even nitrogen generator works in this on the same principle we can explore that is definitely a good option uh, not just nitrogen generation uh, units somewhere else but i i was even thinking why not uh, uh, two more options one is nitrogen generation in petrol uh, pumps right where they use it for uh, um, filling the um, vehicles so we could explore that also i am not sure how much successful that will be that is one second uh, even this all the we can parallelly start looking at the instrument that has come from china which is not giving uh, more than 40% is there a way we can modify that because most of the components will be there probably some modification could be required so uh, for an emergency uh, uh, reason both of this can be looked at over okay thank you so there's another question regarding the control system specs of the oxygen generator so would the ic be able to share this with the uh, entrepreneurs if they want to sure specs uh, it is there on the as i said if you go to satpur uh, iic you, you can get all the specs i am um, we can share the specs also with uh, everybody sharing the specs is not a problem at all Uh, okay, so I will just step in here. Uh, the control system, uh, the the module that has been developed by IIS, uh, IISC. So would you be uh, a, uh, would you be willing to share uh, the design that uh, uh, you know that particular design, the firmware, uh, with the folks who might be interested? Um, not willing. Hundred percent, we will share. Uh, as uh, Professor Vasu uh, put it, uh, there are ways to do that. let us do it uh, uh, pro on the proper channel so uh, tatpur as i said is a single source of contact uh, for oxygen concentrator can take up all of this questions immediately so i would suggest anybody who wants to take up any of these things please connect with tatpur so can you share the the, the details about whom to connect uh, or the spark whom the entrepreneurs or anyone else who is interested to can connect so they can reach out to the sure. person in the chat window sure. yeah okay so there is another question regarding who will certify them their number of varieties are makes available from china so can tsdsi certify them or which is the organization who can certify this chinese imports and in, in india when we are making it then who certifies them in, in india this is a related question thank you number one i can say tsdsi is not a certification body but maybe professor vasu can share with us or, or anup can share with us what is the certification mechanism right so i think for the uh, oxygen generator praveen if i am not wrong uh, has sent it for certification i don't know if it is the eventual government certification to a company called tuv uh, is that correct praveen praveen yes. are you there Yes. Yes. Okay. TUV so only electrical and EMI. Uh, okay. Just to add to that, uh, this is Anup here. Just to add to that, uh, both TUV and Intertech can certify oxygen concentrators against uh, uh, the standard medical uh, requirements. They have uh, actually they have given a uh, quote also with regard to the testing they can do. We can share the quote to anybody who is interested. Uh, okay. So that uh, that answers the question. Yeah, uh, and there was a. I think there was a related question around the timelines uh, for uh, this certification process. Do you have uh, once you submit the uh, the prototype, how much time does the lab take? And are there only two labs, TUV and Intertech, in the country for doing this? Uh, this is Anup uh, again. Uh, so uh, the. Two weeks is the uh, time that is uh, TUV and Intertech has asked for the emergency uh, use uh, certification. So there are two types of certification that can be gone. It's a full flesh certification or emergency certification. Like uh, Professor Praveen was saying, the emergency certification primarily look at basic safety and a critical performance uh, certain elements, but that should be adequate to ensure that the product performs as intended. But there is a detail. certification also that we i am not clear in terms of the full timeline as of now 
but uh, there are there will be other bodies these are the two bodies we have reached out to there are a lot of other medical device certifying bodies once we start to engage with them i'm sure they will be able to uh, provide more details Okay, emergency you. certification can you do trials in hospitals Hello? Uh, that that is left to the hospital actually this product is proven safe in terms of the performance and uh, safety of the product so uh, what we discussed with the hospitals here is that it should be they can try, uh, test out the device but i'm not sure if there is any government specific requirement but like Prof professor pravin has uh, updated in his presentation we have not seen any specific guideline from the government for the uh, oxygen concentrators yeah i uh, uh, it's correct uh, no that uh, there is no recommendation from the government or icmr so this is where i think we need help uh, we can get our heads together get icmr on board and then see how to do this at presently there are none if if can i may from uh, icmr in the audience can they raise their hand do, do we have anybody from icmr uh, anurag bindu do you know anybody from icmr in the audience uh, yeah so we yeah this bindu uh, if the person from icmr who was supposed to uh, was uh, if there's any representative from icmr can you raise your hand and uh, if you would like to make any remarks at this point of time uh, I may be, I may be able to make a comment before uh, the person is identified. Uh, I'm Justin Kopaldas, one of the Intel Swiss from Manipal Hospital. Yes, Dr. Kopaldas, please go ahead. So, so th there is a guidance in the sense that all equipment that is used in the hospital has to be approved by the Drug Controller of India. It doesn't mean that it's a drug, but any medical device. So that certification, if, if, if and when there is that certification from drug controller, or, or uh, uh, once that certification is there, the device doesn't need any further checks and can be used in a clinical practice as a standard of care. When we do not have a drug controller of India's approval, the, the next thing is that it is used as a research Um, with uh, with the vaccines, uh, they are being used, but they are being used in in a research mode to some extent. Some of the vaccines. So the same way, these devices are written up following the current safety checks that has already been done, saying that the the, the equipment is safe uh, and in a laboratory settings, and that uh, individual hospital or or a, or a bigger organizations could give the ethics approval and a scientific clearance for them to be used in a controlled manner uh, or most likely in a shorter frame of mind to prove further clarity on what we call as a patient related integration so now they go from bench to the bedside and with that dcgi approval will become a lot more easier when they actually apply for the DCGI, DCGI um, approval. And that's the phase that we are, we are uh, with the IIC pro projects that uh, we are in process of writing it up through the ethics committees of our hospital to make sure that they go through in a research mode in the step one. And the minute that that, uh, that usage, clinical usage is deemed safe, as well as the other electrical and computer software uh, compatibilities, the DCJ would then grant an uh, unlimited uh, use as a okay. So there are two uh, general knowledge questions, probably. That is, what concentration of oxygen is desirable? Whether fifty percent oxygen level is better compared to normal air, or is anything lesser than eighty percent oxygen as good as normal air? And which oxygen concentrator should people take from home? 5 LPM1 or 10 LPM1? Or which is the para parameter to judge by a common person from what is available in the market? Anyone who can answer this? I think uh, the, the, uh, as the scientists have already pointed out, the, the, it's all in the details uh, rather than the brochure that that's, that's uh, as I see one of my colleagues this morning wanted my opinion on five liter. 
a concentrator that he wanted to buy for himself at home. And then I was trying to look at the brochure. Now that I'm aware of zeolites and the technologies that are going through on the software, and I'm obviously not able to find any of those details on any of those uh, um, submissions that are there on there on the company website or otherwise. So it is very difficult to advise whether I, you take five liters or 10 liters. And I guess at the end of the day, uh, a good five liters is as good as a not so good 10 liters or probably better um, is the take home message there. And so finding this in Indian market with so many different varieties, so many different companies and uh, either our trading partners for overseas products or, um, uh, or indigenously made uh, products. So that, that's a tough question to ask, number one. Number two is that uh, what we want to know is the end product uh, where patient's oxygen saturation is desired. That's probably the target, let's say. It isn't about two liters, four liters, four liters. And so at the end of the day, a five liter one or a 10 liter one, as long as they are providing the right numbers and if it is going to match the patient's need, that's all it matters. It doesn't matter what number you're giving. The higher the number, the earlier you should be at the hospital. That's the next take home message. Um, it isn't It isn't like, like I think one of the panelists have correctly pointed out, this is at the window where you are being used in a control setting like a hospital or a, or a COVID care center. The second option is that you are buying time until you get a hospital bed at home or, or outside home. Number three is that post COVID, where you are still dipping on oxygen, but you are in a static phase and that, that then use. So these are the sort of three or four common scenarios where we would use the concentrators. Yeah. And and uh, our, that's what makes it makes it a lot more control and it, an outcome uh, where we are looking at the patient's uh, saturation rather than anything else. Thank you. Okay. So, so Dr. Dustin, is there, a, is there a, some some kind of guidance we can, as you said that there are no clear guidelines from ICMR or, or DGCI on oxygen concentrators today. So can we draft uh, on what is desirable between the manufacturers and the hospitals? So at this point of time, uh, ICMR obviously doesn't interfere with the Drug Controller of India. And Drug Controller of India has the overall responsibility to, to say the safety and validity of, of a device or a drug. And ICMR guideline says that it only ICMR has the right at this point to say, use additional oxygen devices. And it doesn't specify what. Because it is left to, left to the resources available at uh, individual centers or healthcare provider. And that's, that's unfortunately as broad as ICMR can go because they cannot uh, dictate saying that when you are on two liters, please use concentrator, not use the online or a piped gas. They cannot do that. But I mean, I guess at this point of time, as a part of healthcare professional supplementarium, we are trying to use resources in, in a way that would, that would make the pandemic more tolerable and less injurious to others. Um, and that's 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 the take home message. I'm not so sure if anybody could clearly make a recommendation about uh, about uh, oxygen concentrators, particularly when we don't have any indigenous ones, and most of the ones that are available in the market has such a wide variability. Yeah, they can only be cautioned. Imported, they should there yeah. should be some certification, right? So the people are just throwing money and buying stuff which is junk. Hospitals are getting them and junking them. So how do yeah. you stop that? So at this point of time, hospitals in so majority of the probably 98% of the concentrated use is in is in private homes, not in hospitals pre pandemic. And it is all been used for individuals use who are oxygen dependent because of chronic lung or heart problems. And they are they are, they are not necessarily a standard of equipment in hospitals, and probably are being used in hospitals as a way to titrate them when they go home rather than uh, uh, is, is the only use till now. And that's why there hasn't been great many in, in, in inputs from Drug Control of India's oversight on this these devices because they are not used in hospital. Uh, Pamela, this is yeah. Vasu here. I may be able to partly answer your question. 
Yes, please. So I'm guessing the way TUV will certify such a concentrator is to first of all have a calibrated oxygen sensor and a calibrated flow meter and something that whose standards can be traced to let's say like a NIST standard or a national physical laboratory standard in India. And so when somebody sells a concentrator, it should be mandated that from one of these standard certification agencies, a certificate be obtained that very clearly states that at so and so flow rate, if the ventilator says that there is so much oxygen in it, the certificate should come from one of these agencies saying that at this flow rate, you have this level of oxygen in the ventilator. Uh, that is the uh, first part of your question. The second part is what can be used. I'm guessing that is part of what Justin uh, addressed, and that depends on what is it that a patient is, uh, you know, uh, put on, and whether that level of oxygen is able to raise the oxygen saturation levels in the patient. Uh, and I think on that he was trying to say that one cannot comment because the doctor needs to see the patient to see what is the best oxygen level to raise the patient's oxygen saturation level. So that is based on trials. That was based on human trials, basically. But uh, certification, okay. So we need to publicize that awareness. I think there's no awareness of what certification to look for. Con so concentrator. Uh, so in terms of the the oxygen con the flow rate which we were just talking about i think uh, predominantly if you look at most of the chinese machines which are there and when they talk about a 5 liter the actual output is only about 3.5 liters or maybe about 4 liters that is i think one of the things that we need to check whether at, at the you know at a 5 liter 100 percent there's a flow rate you know matching at 93 percent is very very important i think that's what we all need to look at whereas that is what exactly what we've been working on our uh, equipment where you know at 7 liter and at 15 liter our actual capacity is 9 liters and 20 plus liters so that we get the actual output of 7 liters plus so the correct way to do it uh, pamela if i may is if it's possible and if it's not already available there is no point in reinventing the wheel for the indian standards institute to come out with an emergency set of standards and a set of people who can certify oxygen concentrators against those standards. And I don't think it is very difficult to do that. Okay. So there's a question connected to the, that by Mr. Himanshu Gupta to the organizers and the panelists. Then why is the government giving certification to Chinese imported machines and we are dealing with lives here? Are they giving, do, they, do these Chinese manufacturers have any certification? That's my question. Or they are coming in without any certification. Yeah, there is no certification. That's the question. So is Manoj Punnuswami, uh, can he answer some of this? Uh, Manoj, can you uh, speak now? So Manoj has been, uh, Manoj, you are, uh, please unmute yourself. And we can make you the presenter if you want. So while Manoj is coming online, there was some question connected to RO filters and how do you do the industrial product design and modeling? Can IC team help the entrepreneurs in case they are stuck or they want some help? So I believe this has already been answered. So the link of the IIC SPOC has been given. So they could reach out to the IIC team and they will should be able to help. This is my uh, understanding. IIC may, team may like to say further on that. Thank you. No, you're right. Uh, please do connect. We would definitely help everybody. Whoever is seriously interesting. Uh, we uh, on the same coin. I would like to tell uh, if if you don't have the bandwidth, you can't do it. But you really want to do, join hands with somebody else who is doing. So doing it in a group uh, probably help. For example, here uh, uh, Anup is there. So you want to join, uh, do something else with them. That would be better rather than if you don't have bandwidth also i'd like to extend our support in terms of uh, the uh, auction concentrators manufactured by our principal company has got a state-of-the-art robotic uh, manufacturing facility in tamil nadu uh, we would definitely look forward uh, if anybody is coming forward you know uh, you know join hands and partner with us in whatever extent we can definitely discuss and take that forward as well yeah. so is is 
Is Manoj planning to present something? I suddenly saw his screen coming up. Uh, uh, Manoj, you're there. But his audio is still muted. He's a presenter Manoj, now. Can you mute yourself? Looks like there's some technical uh, issue with Manoj. Okay, so I think I'm both saying, these companies. So you want to put your contacts in the chat window, Rajesh, whoever people should connect with. Yeah, Along I with that, it. from Vasmet, we have Anoop and uh, we have the ISC Tatpar uh, contact, and we could also have your contact. So, so there's a question from ITI Limited, Mr. Arun. He wants to know what is the cost per unit provided that manufacturing can be done at mass level. So ITI Limited could be interested in doing mass manufacture with either ISC or the other startups who are trying to do this. So that's they can reach out to him separately or they can answer now. So I see Manoj is saying I have unmuted myself. Asif, Manoj has put a chat in the chat window that he is unmuted. Mr. Manoj. I can see your presentation is unmuted, but uh, mic is not unmuted. I've requested to unmute yourself again. You have to unmute your mic. Mic and video, you can unmute. And while we are waiting for Manoj oh, to I... uh, get unmuted, uh, is there, uh, there was a question on, uh, is there a specific requirement uh, for manufacturing of oxygen concentrators? Like uh, uh, Mr. Anoop, I think mentioned that for uh, uh, for ventilators, um, uh, you need uh, you need a properly certified uh, 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 factory environment. But for concentrators, do you need a similar environment or it can be manufactured in, in, a, in, a, in a normal type of setting? It's another interesting question regarding whether this can be battery operated version is available or vehicle mountable unit. Can this be designed, is the design compatible for that? And something connected to that is, can we have a panel of such in a hospital set setting, panel of such oxygen concentrators where all connected and this can be viewed by the doctor if the doctor shortage is there on a single screen. Thank you. Okay, uh, that is uh, these all. Both of these are a little loaded in terms of uh, the question. So, Anup, do you want to take the first one on whether you need a certified manufacturing capability to manufacture an oxygen concentrator? I am not aware of that. I don't have that knowledge. Or it could uh, even be, uh, yeah. So, uh, for manufacturing any medical devices. Uh, CDSO man mandates a minimum requirement, uh, at least ISO 13485 certification. And uh, second thing will be in terms of the planable, the area the, where the production is happening, where it should be clean. And uh, I don't think there is a guideline where a clean room is required for either vent uh, ventilator or oxygen concentrator, but uh, there will be minimum requirements in terms of the space and the area that is uh, uh, there. So ideally, for the certification perspective, uh, at least the facility should be ISO. Okay, thank you, Anu. Uh, okay, on the next more. question, on the next question on whether you could put a bunch of these oxygen concentrators in parallel and generate a lot of oxygen or not, uh, it's a complicated question to answer. Uh, what I can definitely say, and I think I mentioned it in between, that in IAC itself, in addition to this concentrator that Professor Praveen Ramurthy and team have put up, which generates about 5 to 10 liters per minute of flow, with about 95 to 85 percentage oxygen saturation. So with the increase in flow rate, the oxygen saturation will drop. There is another team that has built a 50 liters per minute uh, oxygen generator or concentrator using the same principle so it can be scaled up but i think uh, there are issues with 
connecting the same line to many many patients uh, you have to ensure that there is no cross contamination and such uh, so I, honestly I, I do not have a answer to that question uh, that i can uh, you know authoritatively give but there are many other ways of scaling up oxygen production uh, and zeolite adsorption is but one way of doing that. Okay, thank you. Um, so there was uh, now, if you can take questions around the raw material availability, the supply chain security part of it. So if uh, if for this particular version of the oxygen concentrators, is enough zeolite available? Uh, because of the slide uh, that Anup had shown mentioned. Uh, the sources to be from outside India. So is there uh, enough zeolite uh, supply available and, and the other uh, critical items? Or would we need any support or intervention from uh, uh, the authorities on this part? Um, Praveen here, uh, there is a major challenge with the zeolite, uh, but uh, even come a few of the companies uh, who make uh, good zeolite yeah, for oxygen. Hello. Uh, the good oxygen uh, generator grade uh, zeolite is available. Even the couple of companies who had told us they have a hundred uh, metric ton, uh, now they are saying it's not there immediately. So I think some intervention from the uh, uh, authority side would uh, really help. Um, to collectively get it to India and then probably based on who is manufacturing, distribute it or uh, do something like that. Okay, thank you. And the other components, the compressor, the, the control panel and the valve, uh, the, all those uh, would be indigenously manufactured, right? Uh, no, the compressor also right now what we have used is what uh, got, we got it from uh, US. Uh, but there are others which are available uh, can be explored. I, I will leave it to companies to explore as long as the parameters match. Uh, control panel is what I said we have uh, optimized from last one and a half years. Uh, no need to uh, make on their own. They are more than welcome to make on their own or use this existing one. We can connect to the people who make this. Either you uh, get things of uh, your own or do it with them. Either way it can be done. Valve again, when all this uh, NDA and things get signed up, we'll give the design, we'll give connect you to the vendor who is making it. So that way also it can be progressed. Uh, okay, thank you. So uh, we are ha still having a challenge with getting Manoj on the line. So uh, Rajesh, if, um, if you want uh, uh, Manoj's presentation could be emailed to Asit or one of the TSTSI colleagues, and we could present it on his behalf. And you could pitch in uh, uh, with, the, with the remarks that works for you. Uh, sure, sure. I'll definitely check that and I'll do the say I need to uh, so. All right, okay, thank you. Uh, and uh, it's it's already 1.15 uh, p.m., but we still have a few questions to go. So um, if it is okay with the speaker, panelists, and the delegates, uh, we would like to extend this by another 10 minutes and uh, try to pick up the uh, more critical questions. Hindu, this is Vasu here. I've just put up Praveen's and Sushokan's email IDs, and it would yeah. be nice if that would be put up here for the concentrator and the booklet. Okay, so on the on the screen right now, you can see um, the IC. Uh, would you want to put up uh, 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 another colleague's uh, uh, details also here, Vasu? Yeah, Praveen and Sushobans, I have left it, put it up there. All right, okay. Yeah, so I'll request my colleague Asif and Shifali to quickly up, uh, update that information. Praveen and Sushobhan in this on the slide deck. Sure, um, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. So uh, we have covered questions around uh, the the uh, the design, uh, the raw material components, the certifications, and uh, uh, the other side, uh, the requirements from the uh, from the hospitals and the uh, and the end users. So um, uh, there was a generic question around what is uh, uh, because the oxygen concentrators apparently are being used by end users in the in the home environment 
So is there any guidance on uh, uh, when to use a concentrator uh, versus an oxygen cylinder versus, uh, 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 you know, going to on ventilator support? So Dr. Justin could uh, give some amount, some kind of guidance and, uh, you know, usage. And is it, can it be done independently by the, by the patient themselves or do they need to do this under the doctor's supervision? That would be great uh, if you could throw some light on that, uh, Dr. Justin. Oh, yes, thank you. Well, so the, the, the commonest guidance that, that we can see in medical literature about use of home oxygen is only for chronic illnesses. All the American Thoracic Society, British Thoracic Society, all these things have advised um, concentrators as a way to overcome the oxygen cylinder supply problem for, to the community, which is not as robust as to a hospital. And so most of the time they say that as long as the need is less than four liters per, per minute, you could use a concentrator as an alternative to a cylinder, uh, which, is, um, which is sometimes a lot more heavier than the concentrator to, to, be, to be made mobile if the patient needs mobility to just get out of the house, to sit in, 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 in outside their house and so on and so forth. So, these are the reasons why the, those guidelines are initially set up or mentioning concentrator only in chronic illnesses. Now we are looking at acute illness, which is that means that something that is causing you trouble within the within the first week or two of something that's that triggered the problem. And in this setting, it is a rapidly evolving situation. So using concentrator will not necessarily be an ideal solution and only a patchwork solution at this point of time, given the problem which isn't medical, but mostly to do with the supply demand. And so uh, it is unlikely that there's gonna be a advice saying that you use um, 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 concentrator at home um, when it is actually a, a likely to be harmful advice because you could lose out on the that pressures uh, um, like in uh, minutes or hours when the situation could rapidly evolve and then we are not necessarily monitoring adequately thinking that we are getting some oxygen and and that could lead to certain certain problems and also we haven't captured enough number of people who have used concentrators in community anecdotally and found that they actually managed to get through it without any problem and that we need to find which group of people who could you could use it um, so at this point of time, the guidance from medical doctors still is that please come to hospital if the oxygen level drops, not to use concentrator at home. Because once you come to the hospital and for a period of time that, that you, you, you are there and then if, you're, if your level, oxygen level isn't rapidly escalating over a period of maybe a few hours to a day or two, then they could still advise you to take concentrator as a way of getting oxygen at home or any other COVID care center, but home concentrator guidance will not be available if I was the physician upfront. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Yeah. Justin, for that guidance. Um, we'd also uh, want to take some questions around the funding, the, the finances part of it. So there are some attendees um, uh, here in the in the webinar today who are wanting to contribute financially uh, to support uh, the local indigenous manufacturer. And um, so, so uh, can Anu and uh, Himanshu and Rajesh probably throw some light on uh, what could be what is the financial uh, aspects and where uh, could we could you do with some support or uh, engagement on the finances part or investment part? Yeah, I could I could talk from the NGO perspective. So uh, I am personally aware of many NGOs and charity organizations who are currently uh, in the process of buying oxygen concentrators, which could be used by people free of cost at the time of need, because not everybody can actually afford to buy a concentrator and keep it. So I can always connect uh, such funders to these uh, organizations. Uh, typically, um, these imported concentrators are costing 
anywhere between 30000 to 1 and 1/2 lakhs depending on the brand and the output and uh, uh, i think rajesh will anyways mention the pricing of the his concentrators uh, yeah. thank you uh, thank you rajesh for the site wasmet uh, we would appreciate any support that can help us to scale up this operation uh, primarily in terms of pre orders or support with the sourcing so uh, so that uh, that drift cat kind of a working capital support is available that will help us to scale up substantially yeah i think uh, it all boils down to uh, economies of scale uh, funding is definitely a major part of it uh, as uh, one of the panelists did mention in the beginning of the conversation it's a chicken or the egg story i think uh, where do we you know where do we take this call of how many, how many to manufacture and you know a pre order would definitely help uh, manufacturers at this point uh to take up this up and coming to our concentrators we have priced them uh, at uh, for a 7 liter we have priced them at 60000 rupees plus gst and the uh, 15 liter one we have priced at 1.2 1.2 lakhs plus gst at this point and obviously we will also definitely look in bringing down the cost uh, once we have some uh, numbers coming uh, okay. if i could quick if i could quickly yeah. add uh, uh, any such uh, Source of funding, people who are interested to fund, uh, while they could definitely approach people like Anup, uh, Himanshu, and Rajesh directly, the IIC project team, which is Tatpur at IIC.ac.in, is also helping channel such funds uh, to uh, to groups like Anup. Uh, so they could also help coordinate uh, this whole activity, because I'm guessing there is a certain amount of uh, feedback and control that the people who fund would like to ensure that uh, the money they are putting on the table is being put to good use so iisc tatpur team can also help coordinate such initiatives thank you very much basu that uh, that information is useful um so, uh, if uh, the manufacturers on the panel uh, rajesh and anup you could share some kind of a timeline uh, of uh, when you are uh, when you can be ready with commercial uh, you know for picking up commercial orders uh after having satisfied the certifications and approvals from the drug controller authority of india etc etc uh that would be a great help for some of the participants in this call uh to be able to uh, you know decide on how they would like to support and uh, support your um, uh, your you know production activities uh, and even the certification uh, activities plus also making uh, you know uh, uh, placing pre orders on on you so that that may help if you could uh, mail it to us and we could then uh, place it uh, make it available to the community uh, including the tatpur initiative and how how do we go about supporting tatpur and uh, these activities oh. so okay. definitely we can provide that information yeah we'll definitely share that information so are we ready to conclude now bindu yes yes pamela i think uh, anurag i think we've covered almost all the categories of questions and yes, the one that what, uh, i just like to mention that number of different government agencies like mighty invest india and uh, a few others have posted the kind of help and support they can provide in the questions uh, chat box with the links given including a few people have suggested that they have got space with them they can support manufacturing and funding Who of merit? So similarly, the audience and the uh, other members can go through that, and we will also be host posting the video of this separately after a few days in both website of the PSDSI and TCU India. So anyone who would like to go through that can again refer to this. So Bindu can take on from here. Thank you. Thank you, Anurag, and I'll hand over back to Pamela for making the concluding remarks. Okay, is Mr. Pathak there? no okay so yeah so i would conclude i i think there's very good input uh, uh, anurag uh, that you've given about uh, the uh, the uh, things that have been posted by people extending help i think we should consolidate and send that uh, over email also to all the attendees and especially to the panelists so that they have all that information handy to them okay
so 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 again thank you very much for uh, everybody who came together i think it was a very a very insightful and important conversation that has happened here uh, uh, the our intention was to really bring everybody together and to kind of demystify all this uh, uh, you know talk buzz that is there about oxygen concentrators and it's very clear that we are all facing these difficulty about where to source what to source uh, and uh, you know and and there's a lot of money being put and it's very obvious that uh there are a lot of processes that need to be put in place to ensure that uh, the right thing is happening which is actually saving uh, saving lives and sa saving uh, people in the hospital so so justin uh, especially i thank justin for taking this time off in this critical time and giving so much insight to us on what where the difficulties are um i would um, there there are a lot of uh, you know uh, uh actions that could possibly come out of this uh, if people want to uh, take forward i think pavan agarwal gave us a carte blanche open offer from uh, from the ministry of commerce and he have apparently has direct stake on dpiit and he said any other help you need from icmr or drug controller of india or any other certificate government agency i am there with you as a team to help you i think that was a very big and very important offer that has been made uh if uh, people want to uh, make take advantage of that and and uh, and uh, uh, something can be put together and and con sent to them or in you know that would be uh, something we can definitely help mobilize uh there was one uh, person he brought sanjay uh, who is willing to also partner with these uh, startups and and help them with funding and logistics uh, and sourcing of uh, uh they you know uh, uh various supply chain things so i think that's all, another open offer that we have here um uh so so if if people feel that we should continue this dialogue with another session maybe uh, in some time maybe next week or something let us know we could again mobilize uh, the, this dialogue or if this has served the purpose that people know who is who and can connect offline and take off that's fine too so so we would wait to hear from you if you could uh, if you would want to have another uh, round of discussion and till we have things under control otherwise uh, we are very very thankful for everybody who has come together and uh, uh, maybe we can come you can make it a little community uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, share a mailing list is that should be doable right bindu yes pamela we can create a small mailing list uh, which uh, and folks who are interested in continuing in this uh, engagement um, they could uh, just send in uh, an email to us yeah and we will we'll put them on the mailing list yeah so we can create a mailing list with all the attendees and all the panelists and uh, based on what uh, happens in that uh, we can see if we want to get together again so 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 thank you very much a very very insightful session and really good use of a saturday morning um, thanks everybody thank you pamela for the concluding remarks uh, we do have mr patak with us and if he would also like to make any remarks uh, yeah mr patak Mr. Patak, we can't hear you. Okay, sure. Mr. Patak is on mute. Okay. Does anybody else want to add anything, or should we close the session? Uh, Mr. Patak, we can't hear you. So perhaps if you yeah, now, uh, now we can now he's unmuted. Okay. Mr. Patak, how are you? Are you? Okay. 
maybe there's some audio issues he's coming up yeah. as unmuted but we can't hear him so let's uh, let's conclude the session then yeah okay, thank, thank you very you much again, everybody Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And uh, we are uh, really encouraged with the overwhelming response we got. We still have about 100 attendees uh, stayed with us throughout. We will be sending you a, a, a small uh, feedback form uh, after this uh, webinar, uh, wherein you could express your interest of engaging further with, okay. with this activity. Um, and then. Yes, I'm yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you very much.